Hello friends, it's Kayla from my first vlog of 2023. I decided to read some cozy fantasy. Once I have a few books under my belt, I'll talk about specifically what this subgenre means, the recommendations that people typically give, things that exist within it. Um, but for now, I'm just going with a couple recommendations that I've seen around the internet. In 2022, I started my cozy mystery era and my romance era, which I guess I'm still in. So why don't we add another cozy element, which is light, low stakes fantasy. So the things that I have on my TBR for this week are Legends and Lattes by Tralbis. Boundary, The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. And then I don't have this book physically, so I'm actually gonna start the audiobook today, and that's Sword Heart by T. Kingfisher. I'm gonna check it out. If I like it, I'll probably order myself a copy, but I trust in this one because I've read a couple of T. Kingfisher before, not cozy fantasy, more so horror, but like the fun, quirky characters gave it almost a cozy vibe. So I have no idea what any of these books are really about, besides witches and these creatures. I think this is inspired by um, Dungeons and Dragons, but I don't know anything about it. Like anything about Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and then this one, maybe it's also dragons. Ha there's a sword. I don't know, but the audiobook is like 14 hours. So I thought I would start this today, even though it is technically still December. It's December 30th. I'm about to go do live reading sprints with my friends Lexi and Gavin, who I think will be in very much support of my cozy fantasy era. And for those reading sprints, I'm going to start in on the audiobook and then I'll check in with you and let you know like what it's about and how I'm feeling about everything. Hey! Hi! Hey! <laughs> hi everyone! <laughs> Murder at the Irish re Wedding. Has anyone heard of this? No, but I'm so into cozy murder. I say this. In <laughs> theory, I'm into this. I don't know if you guys do this, but like I'll hear about a genre and I'll be like, that's my new thing. Uh, so we don't know yet if I like that because I bought all these books and I started to read some and I'm like, am I into this? I don't know. But in theory, I think I'm going to be a cozy mystery girly. We'll see. Yeah, That's I'm me with cozy fantasy. Just really? Like, literally today, I'm starting these. And I've, I've, just, I've just decided it's my cozy fantasy era. I don't know I love if that's that. true. I love that. Well, you, you have really good ones. I love both of those. Yeah. I'm also doing, um, I think I'm actually going to start today, Sword Heart by T. Kingfisher. I don't know if you guys have read that one. I haven't, mm. but I love T. Kingfisher. Me I too. Think... What are you guys doing for this sprint? So are, are you reading Legends and Laddies slash very sick, what, irregular, which, whatever the title that is? <laughs> Listen, I'm very sensitive about my reading schedule. Ooh. So I don't want to accidentally finish something else before the end of the year because technically my mm. reading is over for 2022. Makes yeah. sense. So I think I'm going to start with the Sword Heart one because the audiobook says it's 14 hours. So there's no way I'm going to read that in one day. Mm -hmm. So then I won't accidentally finish a book before the end of the year. Okay, so that was a really fantastic live show to end out the year. I had a lot of fun. And I read, I think... 10% into Sword Heart and I thought I would tell you about it. But the reason I'm here is because I'm going to do something cozy while reading my um, cozy fantasy books. Slime. <laughs> I know this is super weird. I got slime for Christmas. I've never encountered slime. We got a couple kits for Liam a couple years ago for Christmas and tried making it and it was a big flop. And I know you can make slime yourself, but after getting this and just like feeling it. I ordered the fun ones that I've been seeing on TikTok where like you put it together. So it's like one texture here and then you put this one on top and then you pour something on top and then you mix it all together. <laughs> this is really not for my um, target audience, is it? Anyway, Sword Heart is going really well. Oh my god. It just feels so weird to me to not be holding up the book for you because I never like listen to books or read ebooks where I don't have the physical copy. And I feel like I need to do something while I talk to you about it. That's also how I feel about audiobooks. Like I don't do a lot of audiobooks lately because I feel this need to always be productive when I'm listening to an audiobook and then I have this fear that I'm missing stuff. And I really just can't sit there and I think this is supposed to pour out, but it's a little bit cold because of the mail. I really just can't sit and listen to an audiobook without needing to do something at the same time. Because when I'm physically reading, I'm engaging my eyes and my hands and my mind. Oh, look at that. With an audiobook, it's just my ears and my mind. And I need to keep my hands busy doing something. So I thought, why don't I play with slime while I listen to my audiobook? And then look, there are these little 
charms that come with it. Um, oh my gosh, just really funny to be doing on the internet as a woman in her 30s with a child who should fully be involved, but I saved this one for him. This one's like marshmallow rice crispy something. Oh, and then we have the little stick. <laughs> Let me talk to you about the book. You can't even see me. So Sword Heart kicks off with this woman named Hala. And at the beginning of the book, her great uncle dies and he leaves her this estate, but she also has to like be involved with more with the family. And now the family is trying to get her to do certain things like marry someone else in the family they don't really want her to have the estate and they're kind of locking her away in her room and she decides to unalive herself at the beginning of the book i know this is a cozy fantasy but it starts off with a bang so what she does is she pulls out this sword and she's like debating how to do it successfully um she like takes off her shirt and she's like i don't want anything getting in the way and she's like how do i maneuver this how does anybody you know kill themselves and as she unsheathes the sword this guy pops out of it and it's kind of like a genie situation and he has been stuck inside this sword for a long time i'm sure we're gonna find out like his whole backstory but he pops out and like she's half naked and he's like <laughs> telling her about how he's there to protect her now and she like belongs to her but also she's topless and i just think it's gonna be this like mix of romance and fantasy that's gonna be really fun i think the original person i saw talking about this was riley marie let me give you an asmr moment hold on well i don't even have a microphone out but you can hear the pops here's what the people on tiktok do watch me just become a slime channel listen it's very relaxing so anyway i'm liking the book i'm excited to see where it goes because he's like taking her on an adventure he's taking her away from the family who makes her feel unsafe and unwanted and he's like let's get out of here and it's been very funny i have no idea what they're gonna get up to or what the actual plot of the story is i'll see you soon thanks for hanging out look at that lighting it's beautiful <laughs> good morning friends hello it is now officially look at this glow that's what i said oh that's what you're commenting on you're just like angelic right now thank you um it's officially january i have been <laughs> hello she's welcome. been busy this is our moment to really uh, hey i got him that for christmas my christmas hat thrilling uh, he got me dermot kennedy tickets so woot woot he's a winner um I have been slowly listening to the audiobook while I was filming all of my end of year content. I'm almost done now. I seen film one more thing today and I'm almost done with the book. So now I don't want to talk about it because <laughs> I don't want to bug you. Do you know Dungeons and Dragons? Do you do? Yes. Do you want to read a book that's inspired by it with like, um, what's that a creature called? Demogorgon? No, it starts with an O. Is it an ogre? I think there's a main character who's an ogre in my next book. The book I'm currently reading, Sword Heart, is about this guy who's trapped in a sword. Okay. And whoever pulls it out, um, they're like his master, basically. But then the girl who pulls it out, she's going to kill herself. And she pulls out the sword just to kill herself. And there's a guy in it, and he saves her. And then they fall in love. Okay, well, that's adorable. It's very cute. I like it so far. I don't know if I call it cozy mystery because there are some like intense themes and there's a lot of like battling going on, but it's not like worldly tension. It's just kind of like interpersonal. Anyway, it's going well and I'm going to finish it today. So I will let you know when that happens. I think that some people will struggle with Hala as the main character of this book. I'm home now. I'm finished all my filming. I dropped off all of my library books and I gave my mom the fifth season series that I finally finished and she gave me the calendar I ordered from Etsy for her last Christmas. She has sent me a photo every single day of her completing the puzzle that shows the date. And now that the year is over, she gifted it back to me to now do every single day. So we're officially moving on from 2022 and doing, uh, it's technically like the 
third or fourth day of January. But that's our cozy activity of the day is doing a puzzle. And maybe it'll be my activity for the next 365 days. I don't know. It depends how frustrated I get because I'm not a very patient person. Anyway, as far as Hella goes in Sword Heart, she's kind of bumbling around. She doesn't complete her thoughts. She's relatively insecure. So she'll be talking to Sarkis, the guy in the sword, and he'll say something. He'll ask her a question. She'll be like, oh, well, oh, 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 oh well, I didn't know. And oh, I wonder if this and we should go here and oh, I'm just, I don't know anything. <laughs> she clearly though is the kind of protagonist who doesn't see her own strengths or whose strengths are a little more under cover. I don't know, like she very intentionally asks people a lot of questions to distract them. Like she's an over the top enthusiastic person. So when her and Sarkis are on this mission and people are like, who are you? Where did you come from? What are you doing here? Let me take you back to your terrible family. She's like, asking them a whole bunch of questions to distract them from what they were even questioning her about. And when we were reading Sarkis's thoughts, he too was like, is that just her personality? Or is she thoughtfully doing this? And that's her way of like getting what she wants. And I do feel like that personality aligns with any like subcategory of cozy books. But I feel like she does get a little infuriating. Like the romance is so Fo the focus of the story and so if you read romance a lot where the two people like each other but can't admit to it and are constantly having thoughts of like well they couldn't possibly like me because I'm just such a simple girl and he's this great warrior and then from the warrior's perspective he's like well I'm just a stupid warrior and she has all of these other prospects. It's been a lot of that but there's also like this kind of road trip that they're on and it's just encountering different people. They're staying at an inn and the boys and girls have to be separated and so she's like well I'll just put him in the sword and then I can sneak him into the inn and then I can pull him out whenever I need him. He's also from a different time than her. He's been around for a very long time and so his like customs and things are a little bit different. So when they do certain things he's like well I can't be doing that and she's like no this is like the modern age like this is cool. So that's a fun dynamic to watch and my favorite quote in here I put down is um, she was talking about like family and obligations and he said only the first family is blood the rest are made by time or love or battle and I feel like that's such a good encompassment of like the found family trope and the love for it that people have. To me some key components of a cozy fantasy what I think um, there's often like creatures or animals like animal companions sometimes they are characters themselves sometimes it's just like a cozy element to add. There is magic that makes people feel safe and loved and protected and it's generally low stakes and more so personal stakes than any big like worldwide or citywide or I don't know, like society or race of creature. Like it's not about that kind of conflict. It's more minimal conflict that's more internal, interpersonal, and stuff that can be easily solved by conversation and emotions. I also think a key element is like a cozy setting, whether that be a warm, inviting like location itself, or just the overly described atmosphere of every scene. And those are definitely elements of Sword Heart. However, I would say of the three cozy things I'm reading, I am assuming this is going to be the least cozy because it does have to do with fighting like there is fighting they encounter various people that they need to hurt to escape and their lives are being threatened however you always know that they're gonna get out of it and there's just this tongue-in-cheek kind of fun about the scenes they never feel really high stakes even though they are being threatened. So I did order myself a coffee. I'm having a good time. It's not gonna come here by today. So I'm just gonna finish out the audiobook while doing my puzzle. Swordheart officially gets a four star from me. My endorsement is here from somebody who doesn't really read cozy fantasy. I'm into cozy fantasy. It happened. Oh my god. All right. I think we could have brought it to a five. Is it was a little repetitive as far as like they're traveling here, then they're traveling here, then they're traveling here. But 
I do think that's part of a cozy fantasy that makes sense. It feels comfortable. You get into a routine with these characters and you kind of get into a routine with the plot at the same time. Um, I also think there were some language things that irked me and I don't think they're intentional and I think it's more like subtextually um, that knowing T. Kingfisher's writing and her inclusion of like gender conversations and sexuality, she's not saying anything overt about like asexual people, but I do think that there is something with certain language conversation that came up like three or four times that just made me feel like we could have been a little more inclusive as far as saying things like, I wish I had the physical copy, I could have tapped them. Um, like you'd have to be half dead to not be sexually attracted to this person or um, not being attracted to this person made him not a human or made him seem like less human. And it's not saying like, here's an asexual character and there's the language. It's used as a way to like build up, you know, the desirability of a certain character and it makes sense, but it still made me feel a little meh. Not enough to obviously dislike the book in any way. But yeah, that's that on Sword Heart. I don't really feel like there's much to talk about plot wise. Like it is a romance between these people. They're constantly traveling, trying to get away from people, going back to her like family home. There are little like mini twists and turns along the way. I just thought it was overall really interesting. I also just saw that Sarah, Sarah without an age recently posted a cozy fantasy vlog where she also read Sword Heart and Legends and Lattes. So I'll link that down below. I'm gonna watch it after I'm done everything here to see what she thought, but I think the recommendations also came from Riley. Legends and Lattes I've seen a lot of people talk about this year. I think it's being republished. I don't like this cover, but I know so many people love it. I'm so sorry that I called her an ogre. I think you can understand why. Like, green the beastie moment but it's an orc my bad it's an orc i read the first 25 pages before coming to update you and i really like it so far the first 10 pages i was a little bit iffy and then viv basically goes to meet up with this man she's moving to a new town and she wants to start over she doesn't want like the life she used to have and a plot line that's often fun is when we're following a character who has it's not that they're wealthy, but they have enough money to get everything that they want. So like she wants to open this coffee shop and so she bought these stables from this guy and she's gonna turn it into a coffee shop and nobody knows what coffee is here. And so that portion's not a struggle, like getting the lumber and the tools and finding the person to build it for her. That was all adorable, like her finding somebody in town who built boats and she's like, I have an offer for you. Here's just a bunch of money. I don't think she's exorbitantly wealthy by any means. She just wants to make a really solid, respectable life for herself and wants to run a business and, and work for the rest of her days. But she does have enough money from what she's done in her life so far to just like put it towards building the stuff. That part is not the struggle. The struggle is like planning it and thinking, where do I want the this part of the kitchen to be? Where do I want the stools to be? And these two people are going back and forth at this point about like the architecture of the place. And that's what I always want from a cozy mystery that has to do with running a business. I want the renovation. I want the designing of the place. And I feel like that's already happening and it's just very good for me so far. I think their dynamic is cute. I'm sure we're gonna have more characters, whoever this is. I'm only just about to hit chapter three, so let me read a chunk and I will check in with you in the morning. It's a new day. I'm reading the same book. I'm getting through it rather slowly. I feel like this is something I can expect from Cozy Fantasy is to take my time with it because there isn't this fast moving plot that keeps you like wanting to pick it back up. You pick it back up when you want that feeling again of soft warmth. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I am a little past 100 pages in. It's 300 pages total. We're just about to leave for a hockey tournament, so I'm probably gonna read a good chunk of this on the drive and have Rob drive. We'll be there for three days. I was just planning on bringing the witchy book, but I guess I'm bringing both. There are plenty of opportunity outside of games. Like I'm going to all the games and there's probably like a couple, like I might hang out with the hockey moms and have a drinking night or go out for dinner. But a lot of times when the kids are just in the pool, or I don't know, they're going bowling or whatever. I just have some downtime and I can just 
sit in the hotel room and read. <laughs> We've met a few more characters at this point and I love them all. I feel like a takeaway message of this for me is kind of a metaphor for like strong women, whether it be physical, more so emotional, but since this character is so big and strong and takes care of herself and everybody's kind of scared of her, no one ever thinks that she needs help with anything because she is so capable. And I feel like that's saying things like about the stereotypical strong woman that I really appreciate because there are so many people who are outwardly emotional and vulnerable and they often get a lot of help and care and empathy and then there's people who come off a little more detached or assertive or opinionated and have a stronger personality and therefore people don't think they have the same feelings or need the same care and attention and often get like criticized to a higher degree too because like they can take it. Meanwhile the person doing the same thing who's very like outwardly emotional and like has their heart on their sleeve they get treated much more delicately because they're sensitive but like everybody needs the same kindness and care and all the people in Viv's life are like wanting to help her and support her and obviously she's running this new business she wants a new life for herself she wants to start over in a way but she constantly falls back on old behaviors simple like simple things like sleeping on the floor and not getting a bed because that's what she's used to and then somebody will be like but I thought you were looking for a new life and you were looking for the comforts and the ease of this situation so you should want more for yourself. In her past life nobody ever looked out for her or cared for her so she's not used to that and it's just really beautiful and I feel like it's saying a lot of things maybe it's not but I'm having a lot of takeaways that I appreciate. There is a threat of like the coffee shop being successful and like needing customers and there's also this kind of threat of you know bad people in town who don't want her to succeed or want to have like a cut of her money and so that's the main conflict of the story but doesn't feel like this big looming issue so check in with you soon in this hotel room is buzzing so I'm sorry if you can hear that um, we've been here for a couple days now uh, three games down they've lost all three but there's a possibility tomorrow um, Liam got MVP in one game and then scored the only goal of another game so he's having a good time um, I also stopped at a bookstore and I found Gideon the ninth which is so funny because it's not in stock where I live anywhere so I was gonna have to order it online this is what I pulled out of my members TBR jar and I scheduled it in for February because it was so long and I didn't know that I could fit it in for January so I did the other book um, that I pulled I have that slotted in for January though that's not in stock anywhere either so I was thinking the audiobook don't know if it has an audiobook anyway excited to find Gideon the ninth even though I have a pretty stacked uh, reading goal list for January already I finished Legends and Lattes I'm giving this four stars and it's like I'm finding it so hard to review cozy fantasy because the whole point is not a lot happens and so the little bit that does happen it's like I can't spoil that for everybody. I've also started the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches so we'll see how much I get to this with the rest of the trip but what I've decided is a marker of cozy fantasy is okay for one thing I feel like it is magic that doesn't get used unless in an extreme circumstance and you know that there's magic to fall back on. So I feel like it's kind of got, I wanna say Wizards of Waverly Place. Like, you know how there's always a lesson to be learned and it's like, you, or it's Sabrina where the first thing isn't to use your magic. Like try to solve your own problems, 
without your magic, but us as the viewer knows that there is magic there to fall back on. I think this genre is kind of up and coming and it will build itself throughout the many years to come. So defining it as one specific thing doesn't really feel right, but I am having a really lovely time and I understand why this is becoming a thing for people because, you know, when the world is in such a shitty place, it's nice to turn to softer books, lighter books. And adults need things to read that aren't like intense all the time. And so like romance is having a real, I mean, romance has always been a thing, but it's having a real moment online. And I feel like this type of fantasy is also like that's happening right now. And there's ton, there's middle grade that is light fantasy. There's YA that's light fantasy. But there are some books that have just recently come out that I see people talk about um, in the same category as these ones that just make you feel nice. It's the same with video games. Like I, well, I don't know a lot, but I feel like Stardew Valley and some games like that that are just enjoyable. Like there was that um, unpacking your house or your dorm room game and it's just about having a peaceful time. But there is definitely conflict. It's not without a plot. It's just the characters take up the bulk of it and learning about building this cafe and running a business and like caring about all of your friends and finding your place like that is the point of it. I don't see this as some like incredibly done like I wasn't impressed necessarily by anything. I don't think it is something I would recommend like broadly as a new and amazing fantasy book, but there's definitely an audience for it. And it's me. I'm, a, I'm the audience for cozy fantasy. Do I think you could ever get a five star? I don't know, but I'm having a nice time. So I'll talk to you next about this one. Hello, good morning. That is a man napping. Don't worry, I know him. Um, we had a game at like 6 a.m. So we had to be up at five and we're all very sleepy, but Liam is back down at the pool. Our game didn't go great. Um, but that's okay. I am 140 pages into The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches and I'm having a good time. I was worried because I saw some people saying that it was a romance, like they would categorize it as a romance before fantasy. And so I was wondering how much of the romance would be in it. At this point, it's really not much. There's just a hint of something between these two people. So we have our main character, Mika, and she grew up orphaned, like witches typically are orphaned. Their parents like magically die soon after they're born and they have to be taken care of by somebody else. She has this little group of witchy friends, but they only meet up once in a while. Um, too many witches aren't supposed to be in the same area for certain reasons. And she gets the opportunity to care for these three young witches and help them harness their power. When she gets to this house, there's this librarian guy. Um, the girls have two dads. They will, they're their caretakers. And then there's this librarian guy and they're gonna have, you know, he's on the cover. He's obviously important to this story. Um, and I love him. He's very much a type eight to me. He's very protective. He's very caring of these three girls. Um, he is even protective of Mika and like her loss of childhood that she experienced. He just wants everyone to be safe and comfortable and happy. And he's sad for her because her entire life, nobody was allowed to know she was a witch. And so all of these nannies that she had throughout her lifetime, um, their memories got wiped as soon as they left her family and she got a new nanny to come in because nobody could know she was a witch. But it's hard to keep that secret up for very long. I don't really care for him as a romantic interest, but I like all of the characters um, and this family. Uh, all the young witches have very distinct personalities. Some are more welcoming of Mika into their house and some are less so. Right now it's just a lot of like sharing of emotions, um, sharing how to harness their magic and they're going on little field trips and they're just like getting out into the world for the first time and she's helping encourage that. So it's all mutually beneficial. We're gonna head home now. I'm gonna drive so I can't read but I'll finish it once we're home. And we are back where it all began. Back home from the tournament. I found my bookshelves where I think I started the video. Um, look what came in the mail. Sword heart. And having all three, I feel like this was a really nice introduction more or less to this version of fantasy. I'm gonna end up giving this 
just below these ones at a 3.75. I could have enjoyed it a little bit more if there were some discussions that came full circle and we got some realizations from characters. I think when you introduce the idea of these orphaned girls and the way that they behave to their caretakers, um, there's some takeaways as the reader as far as the ways that people behave when they have been abandoned, when they feel like they have nobody, when somebody takes them in, and the reasons that they push against um, that care. And it's really this challenging of love. Um, somebody who takes you in, fostering, adoption, whatever, may say, you're part of the family, I love you so much, and you don't believe them, or you might not understand how somebody could care for you who's not related to you or hasn't known you for very long. Um, so it's this constant challenging of that love. How far can I go until this person will leave? Because everybody in my life leaves. But I think these varied personalities and responses to Mika coming into their lives was my favorite part about this. Cozy fantasy doesn't mean it has to be light and fun and silly all the time, but you're dealing with these bigger emotions of loneliness and sadness and belonging um, while there is, you know, star dust and magical spells and potions and I think it's such a skill to balance the heavier topics while making it fun at the same time and that's like the whimsy and the well-established atmosphere like that's why it's so important because there's obviously going to be some emotional turmoil throughout the stories. These two especially have such a strong romance but they're not romance books first, but I would recommend them to romance readers who want to maybe like kick off their experience with fantasy. Especially this one if you've liked uh, Grumpy Sunshine Dynamics, this definitely has that. I would recommend all of these, which I think is a huge accomplishment from this video, and I would read from all of these authors again. Well, I've already read from this one plenty of times. While I didn't end up with a five-star favorite at the beginning of the year, I think this is a great way to kick off my reading in 2023. And Here's how I would describe cozy fantasy if I had to do it in just like one explanation. If it was a darker fantasy, if there was a scene where people were drinking tea, somebody would be murdered by that tea. That's darker, intense, I don't know what we'd call it, higher fantasy, uncomfortable fantasy. Um, whatever is in the middle, mid-level fantasy. If there's a scene where people are drinking a cup of tea, in that scene, a big reveal would happen or a war discussion debate would occur over the cup of tea. A cozy fantasy can be explained by if there's gonna be a scene with a cup of tea, making the cup of tea is the scene. No, there's nothing more to it. There might be a conversation, there might be something revealed, but probably not. Like the, the making of the tea, the aroma, the experience of drinking the tea that first sip, that's what a tea scene would be in each of these levels of fantasy to me. So if you're looking for a book where making and drinking a cup of tea is an entire scene in its own right, here are three recommendations for you. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you've read any of these, any other things you would recommend. Maybe the comment section will be full of recs for people to dive into, and I'll see you later. Bye!